Bye, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. <clears throat> so look, look, here I come. In three, look, look, two, look, look, one. Bye, and welcome everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. Welcome, my name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. In the multiverse. Bang, greatest daggone show in the multiverse. <laughs> we have a great one for you today. All right. Cute little show today. All right. So we're going to start off with a little bit of, you know what, another ETF, guys. Valkyrie puts in for Bitcoin ETF, but actually they had done it secretly or something somehow. Anyway, we're going to read about that. And then India uh, is going to be testing out a CBDC. We're going to check out about that. And then, well, just like the Venezuelans, it looks like Cuba is set to recognize cryptocurrency as legal tender or something. They're going to recognize and, and regulate, so we'll check it out. And then the shout-outs and the daily summary as usual. So let's proceed how we proceed with a bye. Let me go over here. We do a little bit of look, look. All right. What we got here? All right, Bitcoin's still in the high 40s. All right. All right, price of Bitcoin, $48,780. And when I left you yesterday, we were at $47,613. So we have gone up $167. Sorry, $1,167. $1,167. Great. All right, let's look at the top 10 of the day. You know who they are. Usual band of suspects. Top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Binance Coin, Tether, XRP, Dogecoin, USD Coin, Solana, and Polkadot holding on the number 10. Look at Solana moving up to number 9. Oh, look at, look at the gains. All right, well, let's look at the market moves of the day. Single digits up to single digits down. Yes, Solana there, nice 11% up. Single digits up, single digits down. Internet computer, 16 up. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Two single digits up, two single digits down. All right, let's see who lost money today. You see anything you like, go get it because it is on sale. Let's see who we were, what we were. Hmm. Not much, just a bunch of stable coin action, really. All right, top 10 losers. Monero, Maker, Uno said Leo, True USD, USD Coin, Binance USD, Pax Dollar, DEI, and Tether. All right, let's see who made money today. Bye. Oh, there's actually, there's some solid gains up in here. All right. All right, top 10 gainers. Cello, Internet Computer, Arweave, Revein, Bitcoin Gold, Waves, Helium, Hollow, Solana, and Hedero Hashcraft. All right, let's look at total mark cap. Oh, shit. They don't have the, do you see up at the top? They don't have the number there right now. So I guess we can't do the total mark cap. It says market cap, zero. It says 24-hour volume, zero. So... Yeah, I guess uh, something's wrong with their website or something. Oh, there we go. Now I did a refresh. Now the numbers are back. All right. Cool. All right. Top 10. Or sorry, we did that. Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Market cap. Total market cap is $2.095 trillion. My left yesterday, we're at $2.026 trillion. So we have gone up. Point oh. Point oh six nine trillion dollars. All right, let's see what the twenty-four hour volume is. All right, 
24 hour volume is 101.2 billion dollars when i left yesterday we were at 111.2 billion dollars so we've gone down exactly 10 billion dollars all right let's get to the stories let's see what we're working with here all right bang nasdaq reveals valkyrie bitcoin futures etf application so you all know how it's working here. Everyone's everyone and their the grandmother is applying for an ETF. Everyone wants to be first. And so Valkyrie's throwing their hat in the ring. And uh all right, let's check it out. So So the rates to launch a Bitcoin futures exchange traded fund for U.S. investors now has a procedural front runner, Valkyrie Investments. On Tuesday, a surprise regulatory filing by NASDAQ to list and trade shares of the Valkyrie XBTO Bitcoin futures fund revealed the existence of the previously undisclosed ETF proposal. Valkyrie seconds second that seeks to wrap Bitcoin futures into an ETF. So you see that it was undisclosed. So these guys actually uh these guys actually already applied but it was undisclosed for some reason all right let's read on so in fact it was really valkyries first the firm said it confidentially filed for the product months ago so they filed for this thing months ago but you know gensler just said that thing three weeks ago right about hmm, i'm looking in I'll, I'll be open to a futures contract uh, a bitcoin futures etf right well, these guys had already done it months ago. So that the fact that it now has a partner exchange means the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission can begin consideration of the product, moving Valkyrie closer to Judgment Day on a Bitcoin futures ETF that every other hopeful, than any other hopeful issuer. The SEC is also considering a handful of Bitcoin ETF applications that are based on the underlying asset rather than any futures markets. It remains to be seen whether Valkyrie's product can pass regulatory muster. Industry observers believe Gary Gensler's SEC may look more kindly on a Bitcoin futures ETF proposal than on the dozen or so ETF applications that would trade the asset itself. I think we're really the only ones out there that have a pure play futures product, said Valkyrie CIO Steve McGlurk. Uh, he said the firm is partnered with XBTO for futures trading. McGlurg said the newly revealed Valkyrie Futures ETF is a so-called 30-act fund, referring to the Securities Act of 1933, that can invest its assets in Bitcoin futures contracts exclusively, so they can't put anything else in this futures. Sorry, sorry, in this ETF. Many of the recent Bitcoin futures filings would be 40-act products, so the 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 something something act of 1940 is the other one that these guys can apply under. Reverting, oh, here it is right here, sorry. Referring to the Investment Company Act of 1940, that would have to partly invest in fixed income or treasuries, he said. Uh, all regulatory minutia could complicate the Valkyrie XBTO funds path. Gensler has expressed interest in 40 act funds that he said, that he has said better protect investors than 33 act counterparts. So Gensler's recent comments fueled a wave, <laughs> a fucking tsunami of uh, tailor-made Bitcoin futures ETF filings, including from Valkyrie, which earlier this month filed a 40-act fund with the SEC. All right, so there you go. Bang. So another one in the pipeline. Uh, now, hurry up and wait. We'll see if Gensler, uh, big brains, if he, gives us, uh, if he gives us one or more of these things. So, all right, I, I guarantee you, right, what's going to happen is once he approves the first one, well, everyone's just going to build the exact same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, it's got this in it, it's got that in it. All right, you'll see like 100 filings for that exact type, that exact same type of uh, ETF. Copycat world, baby. All right, so here we go. Come on, big brains. All right, let's move on. Bye. India CBDC pilot may commence in December, says RBI Governor. So... I don't really give a shit about CBDCs because they don't make us any money, right? But it is India. And one in five people on earth are Indian. And so 
anything crypto y or digital money like coming out of there, we're going to talk about it. But like I said, this obviously is not going to affect our money. It's just a CBDC. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into the whole details, but we've been watching India on this channel since since this channel started. And there's so many ups and downs, so many ups and downs. They tried to ban crypto, then the, then the, 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 the Supreme Court overturned the ban. And then the, uh, the Federal Reserve of India, uh, you know, the banks were still afraid to do crypto stuff. So they had to take the, the, the central bank to court. And then the judge told the central bank to tell the bankers, yes, they can do crypto. Like, it's been just a bunch of hooey. <laughs> a bunch of hilly and uh anyway though but like i said you know uh, india is one in five people on earth like if this were happening in guatemala i wouldn't give a fuck we wouldn't talk about that here <laughs> you know what i mean but india one in five people on earth are indian one in five people on earth are chinese remember that people remember that they between those two countries that's 40 percent of earth And so uh, when it comes to crypto, ha, we'd like to see that 40% of Earth, you know, be able to come and get their hands on the stuff, right? <laughs> come and get their hands on it, right? And so that's why we watch India and China so closely. All right. Let's check out uh, the CBDC coming out of India. So, <clears throat> the Reserve Bank of India, the RBI, could commence preliminary central bank digital currency trials before the end of the year. Speaking to CNBC on Thursday, RBI Governor Shaktakanta Das said that the central bank was, beginning, was being extremely careful in its handling of a potential digital rupee, even as its counterparts around the world have been exploring their own sovereign digital currencies. According to Das, the RBI's focus is on examining the potential impact of a digital rupee on India's financial sector. With issues such as monetary policy control high on the agenda. On the technical side, the RBI governor also revealed that the central bank was weighing the merits of utilizing a centralized or decentralized ledger for its proposed CBDC. Providing a likely timeline for the next phase of the project, Das remarked, I think by the end of the year, we should be able to be in a position perhaps to start our first trials. So the RBI's governor's comments are in keeping with recent remarks from other central bank officials in the country about the progress of the planned digital rupee project. Rupee, that's the name of the Indian money, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, just in case you didn't know. Uh, as previously reported by Cointelegraph, RBI Deputy Governor... Rabbi Sankar stated back in July that the central bank was leaning toward a phased implementation strategy for the CBDC project. With global financial bodies such as the Bank of International Settlements pushing for CBDCs as a counter to cryptocurrencies and private stablecoins, several central banks are developing their own national digital currencies. According to the Atlantic Council, back in July, countries representing 90% of the entire globe gross domestic product are in several stages of CBDC exploration. Among the major global economies, China continues to lead the way. Oh, they're leaving everyone in the dust uh, in the CBDC race with multiple pilot programs to incentivize the adoption of its yuan. Yeah, yeah, they've already, they've already released it in a bunch of provinces already. Uh, I think they gave, I think in one province, they gave some out for free. Like they just were like, hey, people, here, have some money. Try this thing out. You know, they just gave it, gave out a little bit to everybody. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the province. I think Shenzhen maybe or something. But anyways, yeah, they're way ahead of us, way ahead of us. Uh, we, we watched, I mean, remember in 2019, we read the story about, you know, in China, their homeless people have QR codes. Yeah, yeah, like if you want to give a homeless guy money, boop, give him a, it's, uh, you could do it through your phone. Yeah, that's how... That's how cashless uh, China is. Like, people talk about, yeah, we're going to have a cashless society, cashless society. 
Well, China's almost there already. Right? We read this thing already. I mean, I'll be quick about it, guys, because I know you guys all watched it. But just for new people here, we read a story from a New York Times reporter here. And uh, she tried to live in China, in Beijing, for one week on cash, just on cash alone. Uh, you know, not using her credit card or anything. Yeah, it was it was crazy. She, she couldn't hardly do it. Uh, she went to pay with cash to a taxi driver. He was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> right? She went to McDonald's to go buy, you know, Big Mac and fries. And they looked at her like she was crazy, like she was an alien from outer space. Like, what the hell is this? You know, tap your phone on the thing, right? She's like, no, I only have cash. They had to actually call a manager from the back to take the cash. Because <laughs> they didn't even have the facilities to take it. And uh, that's how deep China is. And so, uh, you know, people always talk about cashless, cashless, cashless. You know, one day we're going to be all cashless, right? Yeah, well, China is the perfect example uh, of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how soon America will get like that. You tell Americans you're taking away their dollar. Yuck. That's not going to be pretty. I mean, it'll eventually have to come to that, but I don't think it's going to be an easy transition around these parts. In China, it's an easy transition because the, the Chinese Communist Party just says, this is what you're using, fuck sticks. <laughs> and everybody knows to shut the fuck up and just do it. Right, you don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I, you, know, I, you don't want to get in trouble. Next thing, next thing you're in some gulag, right? For fucking 10 years or some shit. So you just shut the fuck up and do what you're supposed to do over there, right? You know, here in America and Europe, we have a little thing, you know, this little concept called rights. You know, people have rights. <laughs> Not in China. <laughs> All right, guys, enough, enough. Damn it. I think the fuel's kicking in. Yeah, not in China, baby. Look, this is your new money. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Jinping. Yes, President Xi. Oh, well, that's it. That's it. You just bow your head and yes, President Xi. <laughs> Thank you, President Xi. I tell you, when that when that thing comes starts coming around here, CBDC in America. I tell you right now, we'll be we'll we'll be doing this show. We're gonna have a good laugh. Oh yeah, they're gonna call it a commie antichrist money. <laughs> yeah, it'll get crazy. It's gonna get crazy here. It'll get crazy here. You'll see. I mean, motherfuckers around here don't wear a mask because of COVID. You think you're gonna take their dollar from them? You're fucking crazy. Well, not without a fight, you won't. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to be funny to watch. Anyways, let's move on, though. So international cooperation. is also another major talking point in the CBDC space. <laughs> With regional digital, digital currency initiatives uh, taking shape in Asia and the Caribbean. Yeah, regional. So not just by country, but by the region, right? Remember we were reading that thing? IOTA, right? Is part of that North Africa, blah, blah, blah. I don't remember what it was called, right? And it's kind of like they want to sort of have a regional economy. Remember we read about that a couple months ago? So, and then that's the truth. And then this one in the Caribbean, uh, some of the countries over there have their own CBDCs, but they're thinking of building a CBDC sort of for the region, right? Anyways, anyways, we'll see how this all pans out. Uh Everything's in its early stages, except China, which is, well, you know how Xi Jinping do. You don't fuck around. And that's the thing. Look at Xi Jinping, right? He just said, yeah, we're having a CBDC and done. Right? And here it is. I mean, they have it already, pretty much. Whereas in other economies, you know, everyone's got to argue and complain. And All right, let's move on. Let's move on. <coughs> Bye, Cuba. Set to regulate and recognize cryptocurrency. Man, this is great for the Cuban people. So as you all know, I live in South Beach. So as you all know, there are a fuck ton of Cubans around here. And fucking, let me tell you something. I know it's not on the news. Everything is about uh, the Taliban in Afghanistan right now and COVID deaths. But uh, Cuba's in a fucking frenzy right now. There's still riots going on there. And every once in a while, I got a buddy. He's from Cuba. And uh, so whenever I see him, I'm always like, hey, is the Cuban thing over yet? He's like, nah. They're still rioting over there. But uh, the Cubans... The government turned off the internet. And I guess they kicked out the reporters. That's why we have no information on it. Remember that thing jumped off like about two months ago. Right? 
when the people started protesting and everything? Yeah, yeah, but they locked it down so we can't get any information out. Like, unless you know a Cuban who has family back there, which I do because they're all around here. You don't know. But, yeah, Cuba's really fucked up right now. Uh, there's still riots going on in the streets. Apparently, the police are using live ammunition, um, according to my buddy. Uh, so, uh, well, crypto would be good for them. You know, I mean, uh, you take all your money, you buy a whole bunch of Bitcoin with it, throw it on a Ledger Nano, fucking hijack a boat and get the fuck out of there, you know? I would. You know, I'd be like, great. You buy a Ledger Nano and... You know, put my whole life savings on it. Just let's go. Right? Turn all my life savings into Bitcoin. Throw it on a Ledger Nano. Just put that in your pocket. Right? And then uh, take out some cash. You know, use for the, to pay off some smugglers or bribe some cops or something if you got to do it like that. Yeah, and get the fuck out. And then you get back to America. Open yourself a bank account. Open yourself a Coinbase account. And whew, yeah, you get your money back, right? Um... Yeah. All right. So that's good. All right. So let us proceed. Yeah. 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 That that shit is still going down over there, man. Because you don't hear anything about it, right? Yeah. The government is on its information lockdown. No internet <clears throat> in and out of there. And uh, like I said, I think they must have just got rid of all the reporters. Because there's no media coverage or anything. I mean, riots and stuff like that. You know, CNN is usually there. Al Jazeera, right? Stuff like that. Nah. All right, guys. <clears throat> but that's the situation in Cuba, just so you know. Uh, so, because, you know, people probably forget. Or, hey, whatever happened to that Cuba thing? Yeah, that's still going on. It's still going on. All right, though, but let's check about crypto in Cuba. So, look, the Cuban government is reportedly planning to recognize and regulate cryptocurrencies for payments. According to Al Jazeera, the Caribbean nation's central bank will establish rules for mainstreaming... <laughs> My brain went... Ugh. All right, they will establish rules for mainstreaming cryptocurrency transactions. Cuban authorities are also expected to distribute relevant licenses to businesses based on the crypto-related services they provide. Some sources claim that the move to allow cryptocurrency as legal tender has been well-received by Cuba's tech-savvy population as the country had to temporarily stop accepting cash bank deposits in United States dollars, given tighter restrictions set by the former U.S. President Donald Trump. <clears throat> Struggling economies such as El Salvador have also started mainstreaming Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Remember that? September 7th. Uh, right? Wasn't it the 7th, right? It, it, it goes fully live, and I was telling you guys, all right, now we're going to watch. Let's see what happens. All right? <laughs> Do soccer mom and dad wake up and magically want... Want Bitcoin to buy coffee? We'll see. Um, they'll buy it to invest in it, though, if they're smart, fuck sticks. All right, so listen. <clears throat> so El Salvador have also started mainstreaming Bitcoin BTC adoption. On Monday, Salvadoran President Nayib Bukele announced the construction of a countrywide infrastructure to support the adoption of Bitcoin. So, right, we read about that. They've got a... A few hundred Bitcoin ATMs around the country. They've got, I think it was like 50 financial institutions, wasn't it? Something like that. All across the country ready to take deposits and you could buy from there and blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, they're not fucking around. All right. So El Salvador's Bitcoin adoption policy can reduce overall remittance costs and potentially transform the remittance landscape across Central America, according to the Central American Bank for Economic Integration. So Dante Mosi or Mossy, uh, executive president of the CABEI, believes that El Salvador's out-of-this-world experiment. <laughs> They're all freaking out about it, right? It's out-of-this-world. It's, it's great. Like, even the World Bank and uh, I think the IMF were like, no, El Salvador, don't do it. Like, what the fuck do you guys care? Like, what do you care? Like, what's the big deal? I still don't understand what the big deal is, personally. Um, I haven't been able to hear a... <sighs> A reasonable reason why they just keep saying don't and then throwing fear out there you know it could do this it could do that it could do this it could do that 
Yeah, well, if it does all that and it destroys the economy, all right, well, just stop letting it be legal tender. I mean, you wrote the law to make it legal tender. Well, you can now write the law to reverse that law that you just wrote. You know, it happens here in America all the time. So I don't know why everyone's freaking out about it. I say let this experiment roll. Uh, I want to see it. Like I said, I'm looking at it for the perspective of I want to see if these Bitcoin maximalists' dreams come true or like I think. Uh, I don't think people are going to use it to buy coffee, but if you're going to make it easier for them to buy, well, they're going to buy it and invest in it. Fuck yeah, I see that. I see that, but... <laughs> so we'll see. I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. That's only in another, what, 10 days from now. Yeah, and it's going to be released. <coughs> or becomes official. Okay, so Dante Mossi, Dante Mossi, whoops, the executive president... Right. Oh, yeah. He said uh, he believes that El Salvador's out of this world experiment could result in greater financial inclusion. And thus, it is in CABEI's best interest to help El Salvador create a technical framework for Bitcoin adoption. So, bah! So, the Cubans are coming in. The Cubans are going to do it as well. Um, um, I'm happy for them. Um, I'm not bullshitting you. I, honestly, if, if I were in Cuba right now, eh. Uh, as soon as I can get my hands on crypto, I would drain my bank account, throw, th buy in Bitcoin, put the Bitcoin on a ledger, and get the fuck out of there. Straight up. Straight up. And uh, so good stuff. And it's also good stuff because now, you know, obviously you guys know Cubans here in America. Well, basically it's the remittance from here in Miami that pretty much kind of keeps Cuba alive. All these rich, well, not rich, but, you know, middle class Ur uh, urbanized Cubans here who basically send remittance, you know, every month back home to their families, right? And so, um, which is good that, uh, sorry, the crypto is good because, well, now the government here, the government of America, you know, America, we have Cuba under what's called an embargo, right? That's why Cuba is a piece of shit. If we just let Cuba do their prop, like, you know, uh, if we took off all the sanctions and stuff on them and just said, okay, guys, just be a regular country, yeah, they'd be fine, right? We have what's called an embargo against them for over 50 years. I think it's, I think it's been 70 years now. That's why Cuba's a piece of garbage. And one part of the embargo we have, as you just read, um, Donald Trump, like because we have embargo, he sanctioned them. Well, he has the power to sanction them, and he did. And so people couldn't send money back home to their families, right? And so now with crypto, with Bitcoin, well, you can't stop someone from sending money home now, right? Can you? Right? Uh, know what I mean? You can't stop them from, from getting crypto now. Um, right? There's no such thing as, you know, uh, well, sanctions on Bitcoin. As long as I have the address, well, you can't stop me from the, the Bitcoin address of the person. Well, you can't stop me from sending them <laughs> crypto, can you? Right? Uh, that's part of the beauty of, like, one of the things I really like about crypto, right? You can't stop me. Sure, you could, you could trace the transactions and all this and all that or something, but the actual doing of it, you can't stop me. Whereas, you know, when we're sending cash, well, when people send cash, well, it says right here, right? Look. Look at the byline of the story. The country had stopped accepting cash bank deposits because of Donald Trump. Oh, well. Now that you've got crypto, who gives a fuck what a fuck stick like that says? So anyways, I'm happy for those people. Like I said, that shit's still going on. Riots in the street every day. The police are using live ammunition. Um, it's a messed up thing. I mean, the guy, I don't remember the guy's name. Because I, I, I can't remember if it's one of the Castro brothers or something, but because I think he gave up the party. I don't think it's run by one of the Castro brothers anymore. I think it's some new guy. And he went and apologized and all this shit, but people want, you know, reforms. Anyways. All right, guys. So there it is. Come on, Cubans. Liberta. Liberta. Freedom. Liberty. All right. Liberta, my Cuban brothers. Look, we stand in solidarity with the Cuban brothers. Yes. All right, guys. 
That's what we got here. Wow, we got some beautiful brawlies. Still don't have one, but lovely lady. See you, lady. Bye. Who do we got? KJ. Look, look, brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Grunchable, Grunchable. Love you, see you, brother. Bye. Bitcoin Kong. <laughs> wow. Yes. Love you, Kong. See you, Kong. Bye. Whoop. Oh, Kong's got a little piggy wiggy. CB News. Yes, Kong. V Chain, look, look. You know how we do around these parts. Fuel up, buck sticks. <laughs> you too, miscreants. Look. You tell him, Kong Dagon. Fuel up. V Chain's on the way. Look, look. Boom. Valkyrie Bitcoin ETF application. Boom. India is going to make a CBDC. Look, look. Boom. And Cuba is set to recognize some crypto. Liberta, my Cuban brothers. Boom. And look, look. If you follow this channel and you do what you're supposed to do, buy revenue generating product and store it in a big old warehouse, one day, one day, not far now, your portfolio, it's going to look a little bit like a little bit of boom. There it is. That's what it's going to look like. Boom. Look, look. All right, Kong. Thank you, sir. Bye. What else we got here? Technically bullish. <laughs> now he's got a that scary face picture thing for his thing. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Benny, I'm, what's Benny I'm talking about? Benny, I'm connecting the dots. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. What's he saying? CB News? Yes. The tsunami is getting closer. Yes, of course it is. Every day, brother. We're getting closer to it every day. Every hour. Every minute. Every second of every day. Our journey becomes that much smaller. All right. It's like a marathon. You're running a marathon. With every step you take, you're closer to the finish line, right? When is the finish line? Oh, who knows when you're going to get there. <laughs> but just keep running. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And eventually, you'll get to the end. All right. So what's Binium talk about? British billionaires, family office, to bet more money on crypto. Of course they are. You all know what a family office is. It's some super rich guy who basically makes a hedge fund, but it's with his own money. Right? So they're allowed to do whatever they want. <clears throat> so great, great news. Uh, like I said, I want to see more investment vehicles coming out of coming out of the UK. Uh, I want to hear some ETF applications coming out of there. Like, what the hell? Right? Um... I noticed that when we read about the, the European stuff, they never tell us when the applications are being made, right? All these ETPs we've read about in the Germans and in Switzerland, right? They don't tell us when they apply. They just tell us, bang, all right, this ETP is now going to be on this exchange or that exchange, right? The Canadian and American ETP, uh, ETFs, we have ETFs over here in North America. The ETFs, right, they tell us when they apply. Today, so-and-so applied for bang, 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 right? But I noticed that in Europe, uh, they never tell us when they apply. They just tell us, bang, you've got it. Like when they come out, you know. Ah, whatever, just food for thought. All right, so let's move on. Oh, yeah, so this billionaire in his family office. Bang, tag on right. Smart man. All right, we got here. Edwin, the original. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Yeah, drop a son of a bitch. Look, bang. Look, Bang! <laughs> Bang! Got you wrong, Cash. Turn around me. Got you wrong, Cash. Look, look. Love you, brother. See you, brother. No, Xavier. Bang! Ah, oh, shit. All right. Robbie Hardaway. He's been with us so long, his picture's in black and white. All right. Until I think of some stuff, I got to just keep saying that. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang! <laughs> Yeah, since the days of the Mayans. Okay, I'm going to use that one next time, maybe. We'll see. Universal misanthrope. The loyalist, our loyalist from Central Europe, holding down the Central European insurgency. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. What do we got? Radster. 
Lemon Brothers, Shiba Brothers, Bang, Crypto Faucets, Crypto Master, yes, Crypto Master, say Master, M-A-S-T-A, Crypto Master, yeah, that's how you pronounce it in the, that's how you pronounce it in the markets, he's a master, <laughs> look, look, Master, Lemon Brothers, Shiba Brothers, Bang, yes, the master. <laughs> That's how you do it. The drunken master. All right, what do we got? Fisteran. Fisteran. Blockchain with real application purpose, real partnerships, and solving existing business challenges in Africa. Look. Better brother, see brother. Oh, look at him. He's got a hashtag VChain thing down here. And a made in Africa. A little uh, hashtag there. Hmm. All right, love you, brother. See you, brother. Interesting. The V chain. I'd like to see what. What are you guys trying to do? Something with V chain? We up to? Urgh. I'm curious now. Now I'm curious when I see the V chain thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you put it. You put that hashtag right in your. You know your 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 thing. All right. Well, hope you do well, brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Hell yeah. He's got some V-Chain action going on there. All right, we got here. <clears throat> Victor. Love it, brother. See you, brother. <clears throat> Bye. Mm. Oh, Andrew Pacheta, the enforcer. Look, look. What are you trying to sell, fuckstick? Settle out. Bye. The juice is worth the squeeze. Tell him. Love it, brother. See you, brother. Bye. DP Entertainment. So, brother. Yes. Love it, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Is there someone else hiding in here? Where's the assassin? Yeah. yeah she took the night off of killing. Oh, there she is. <laughs> there she is. Of course she didn't. Always on duty, right? All right. <laughs> Sunny Vape, Spy Lady. Love you, lady. See you, lady. Bang! The assassin. Bang! All right. Here's Sloppy. Sloppy. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Holding down the surgency in the northern sector in Toronto. Love with the sea, brother. Bye. All right, I think I see another Benjamin. What? What's he talking about? CB News. What, Benjamin? CB News. Constellation Network to provide U.S. Air Force. Oh, I did read this. We thought blockchain security for data sharing. Yeah, the Air Force says, uh, and I, I told you they would. I mean, you have to. When you got, I told you, look, guys, you guys remember in 2019, when Xi Jinping said, look, look, we're going to blockchain up this whole country, China, all right? Right? What did I say, guys? I said, look, if he does that before us, they're at a, 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 you know, don't just think about it from the blockchain perspective, like, yay, blockchain. But think about it just from a security perspective, a national security. It's a national security issue. If they've got everything on their block, if they've got all their security shit on a blockchain, which you can't hack, right, yet, until the quantum computers come around, well, they're in an advantage, right? Because they hack our shit all the time, all day, all night, right? Same with the Russians. I mean, that's not bullshit. We do the same with them. I mean, we're no fucking angels over here, but <laughs> yeah, I, we're not little Susie with pigtails in a, a nice ice cream cone over here just chilling out. But still, you know, it, it, but that's the, that's the thing is we're all hacking each other all the time. <laughs> and so when China blockchains up, boom, well, you can't hack it anymore. Right when they've got their vital security systems uh, all blockchained up, you can't, we can't get in and see what they're up to, right? And so uh, that's what this. I, I read an article about it actually. I did read the article about this, uh, Benjamin. Actually, maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow. It is tomorrow is the well. It's technically supposed to be today's Saturday show, but uh, you know, you know how it gets on a Friday night. Uh, a lot of NFL games last night. A lot of drink. A lot of smoke. I had to, I had to sleep in and recover. Anyways, it's 8 a.m. now, but I'm going to do it on the show. I'm going to probably do it. Okay, so but I, I but I will just say what he said a little bit is that, um, yeah, he the, 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 the Air Force master, he was like, yo, right, the blockchain, it's the future, it's the this, the that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, dickheads. What's taking you so long? Uh, Xi Jinping's been blockchaining up China since 2019. And so, uh, and you really have to think about it from a national security perspective, right? Uh, if they can hack us and we can't hack them, well, they have, is that called strategic advantage or tactical advantage? I think it's called tactical advantage, right? 
Yeah. So, good, good. All right, we'll, we'll probably check that out in, in the next show. At least a little bit. All right, bang. That's what I've been saying from the beginning, man. Uh, well, since 2019, after Xi Jinping said that. It's like, yo, dogs, we got to get blockchained up, man, and we're going to be fucked. All right. Banks, love your brother, see your brother. Bye. And finally, there's All In. Lorna All In down. She said, look, look. Oh, yeah. I'm All In, bitches. Bye. <laughs> what you know about that, motherfuckers? Bye. <laughs> so she did it. Oh, what you know about that? Bang. Look. <laughs> Lorna, love you, girl. See you, girl. Bang. All right, that's good enough. Let's get to the Death Star. Bye. Let's go. Whoops. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. All right. All right. Nice little quick little show. Nice cute little show. Good. Well, a great show, of course. It's the greatest of the multiverse, but a quick one. All right. Good, guys. So what do we read? So Valkyrie, Bitcoin ETF application. So you all know about the applications. We don't need to harp on this too much. Um, uh, the one thing I like about it well, we can. There's a few little details. Was that they they applied for this thing and did it secretly, confidentially? Uh, I didn't know you could do that because you, when you do anything with the SEC, it's a public, it's a public uh, agency, and so anything that anyone does with the SEC, we the public, we're allowed to see it. And so I've never heard of something like that, but it's real, I guess. And so, um, <clears throat> uh. Uh, their 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 ETF is going to have only Bitcoin in it, which is the 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 the, the blah 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 Act of nineteen thirty three, and uh, um, so the the article at least said that um, um, Gary Gensler he he likes the 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 blah 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 Act of nineteen forty better because. They have security, uh, securities and stuff in it too. I don't know why that is, but whatever. But um, anyway, so another ETF application. We will wait and see. Bang! All right, India CBDC, and so like I said, I mean, <clears throat> this roller coaster ride of nonsense coming out of India uh, when it comes to crypto. Um, like I said, you know, I've said this before. I think you know last year or something i told you guys well actually we read about it here didn't we remember india uses ethereum 19 of india's seaports use ethereum right now so it's not that india doesn't like distributed ledger technology they do not like the wannabe money stuff right so they don't like bitcoin because it's like a wannabe money thing any of these stable coins or monero zcash any of that wannabe money stuff they don't like it but VeChain, IOTA, Stellar, you know, Tron, uh, Polygon, whatever, yeah, they don't mind that stuff, right? But uh, they're having such a, I don't know what the fuck their problem is, such a hard time just getting down to regulating it. Because, I mean, they banned it once. I mean, and the truth is, let's let's talk about the truth, though. The RBI, the the, the central bank there, the lady, she said she's the... She, she's the head of it. <clears throat> Remember we read about four months ago, five months ago, that they are coming up with a bill. Remember she said that they sent it to the cabinet um, to finally regulate crypto proper. Like, okay, if you don't if you don't like that wannabe money stuff, which I understand completely, <clears throat> uh, like the article said, um, even the World Bank and the IMF said that these companies, not companies, countries, <laughs> what's the difference really? These countries... Your, your country your country is basically a big company, and we're just all employees for the fucking thing, really, aren't we? Um, in a sense. <clears throat> um, what was I going? Where was I going with that? Um, fuck. What did they say? Oh yeah, that the um, they would rather countries come out with CBDCs uh, to sort of battle the stablecoin thing that's coming up, right? Um. Yeah, so that's that's what we have to remember about India. Like we hear these horror stories coming out of India, but 
you got to keep it in perspective. They just don't like that wannabe money stuff. But all these other things, like I just said, 19, <clears throat> India uses Ethereum at 19 of their seaports right now. Yeah, we read about it last year, right? Remember, guys? So obviously they see the use cases to be used for stuff for this digital ledger technology market. They just don't like that money part. So um, anyways, they're going to um, uh, what a trial of CBDC. Wasn't it November, December it said, right? Q4, late Q4. Um, like I said, you know, the Chinese are already rocking and rolling. I mean, they've left everyone in the dust. <laughs> like, I mean, like, you know, the way China has left us, it's like we're all in the 12th, you know, we're, we're still on in ancient times, you know, like we're in medieval life. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're like in still medieval you know, medieval Europe, you know, living in the, living in the forests, of Germany or something, you know, and China's fucking, you know, modern. So anyways, India CBDC, I uh, will see about that. Um, bang. All right. And then finally, Cuba set to recognize crypto. Viva la Cuba. Liberta. Yes, Cuban brothers. Get your crypto. Get that crypto. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Uh, it's a little bit of freedom, a little bit of freedom. Uh, uh, you know, I, I told you all that shit that's going on over there. Oh, sorry, guys. One second. Sorry about that. All right. All right. So, yeah, I told you about the shit that's going on there. It's been going on for, what, two months now? It's, it ain't over. It's not over. It's just we can't get reports out of there. Unless you know someone, or like me, who know, you know someone who knows someone there and they're still telling you what's going on, right? And so, um, like I said, man, if I were Cuban, <laughs> the first day that they allowed me to get Bitcoin, I would drain the bank account, buy Bitcoin with it, put that shit in my pocket, and uh, throw it on a ledger, put that motherfucker in my pocket, and get the hell off that island, straight up, straight up. Get the hell out of there. Um, that's no good. It's no good over there. It's no good. That's what. That's how the guy talks. It's no good. I go, how's your family? Oh, man, it's no good. It's no good, man. We want intervention. Intervention. That's what he tells me. Right? They, want, they want the Americans to intervene. Right? They want the Americans to send some Marines over there and you know, liberate them. Right? He, he keeps telling me, it's no good. We need intervention. But Biden, he don't give intervention. You know, he doesn't give the intervention. I did. We can't just be sending Marines everywhere like that. But, uh, but anyways, so good for these guys. Um, and like I said, that remittance thing, you know, Donald Trump, he, um, like I said, as you all know, uh, you know, America, we have Cuba under an embargo, an arms and trade embargo, right? So they're not allowed to get guns and stuff. I mean, they sneak them in and trade, right? And uh, oh, and then so right, and so like the Donald Trump thing. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Right, like Trump did it. Some did you hear that? Trump did something. Oh, a kidnapped child. Yeah, yeah. Shit. So Trump did something where. The bank said, all right, well, we're not sending money to Cuba, right? So with this thing, with this, well, it's not going to matter. You don't need a bank anymore. You could send the money directly to your family members, your loved ones over there, uh, you know, right to their, their Bitcoin account. Not account, but you know what I'm saying, to their Bitcoin address. And so I think this is great uh, for the Cuban people. And I hope that shit stops over there. And... Uh, Look, we stand in solidarity with our Cuban brothers. Liberta. All right, on that note then, on that revolutionary note, <laughs> let's chill it and kill it. Bang, let's get you back to your wives and lives. Look, subscribe below, press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do this show. The greatest show on earth. Look, the greatest show. Yes, yes. In the multiverse. Look, my name is Shamari Clark. I love talking money. Bang, love talking crypto. Bang, this is the favorite time of my day. 
So thanks for having me in your home, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another fun fact, fact field day of crypto talk. Yep. So until then, subscribe, subscribe here and press the bell. You don't want to miss the greatness. The bell will notify you when the greatness arrives. And then watch that video there. It's the greatest in the multiverse. <laughs> and I'll see you all tomorrow. So look, my name is Shamar Clark, always watching our money. And bye! Most importantly, I'm always on duty. Bye! Yes. See you all tomorrow, guys. Yes. Over and out. <laughs>